Okay. Uh, thanks for everyone being here. And we'll have some more coming in in just a few minutes. We're going to be taking up HB 265. And I'm going to turn it over to the chairman. He's going to go ahead and get, matter of fact, Mr. Chairman. Matter of fact, here he comes. <laughs> and better, we have the author. Better late than never, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> It's our annual IRC update, and um, we're, we're getting a lot of questions regarding uh, configuring, you know, people's taxes, and that's why the CPA here, Chairman Knight, was, was sponsoring the bill and was going to talk about it briefly, but we do have John with the uh, Department of Revenue. This is their bill, and we, it is a clean bill, um, entirely, you know, couples with the the IRS position. So um, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Chairman Knight. Thank you, Chairman Smith. And uh, we'll hear from John here in a second. If you're ready for that. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, this is the uh, annual IRC update bill. As everyone knows, um, the state of Georgia basically starts off with uh, and, and looks at federal code. We, uh, we start off with, you know, federal AGI and uh, so every time that the feds change code or adjust code, the state comes in here and we, we update our code based on changes at the federal level. And uh, we either adopt what they had, or we say, no, we're not gonna adopt it, or we, we you know, alter it depending on our situation and financial situation. This year's uh, annual update, and I'm sorry, I don't have my tracking sheet with me, but uh, very simple, probably one of the shortest ones we've seen in recent years, um, a lot of it has to deal with the CARES Act um, uh, as it goes through and we're, we're simply making sure that we're clarifying that we are following uh, federal code in regards to especially the PPP loans. Uh, and then um, also that the expenses that are associated with those loans are also deductible because under normal circumstances in our RC code, you know, you get forgiveness of a loan, that's revenue to you, okay? Then you can deduct expenses. But in this case, the, you know, the, the um, uh, Congress said, hey, these are loans. We're forgiving these if you use them for these purposes. In addition to that, there's clarification that the IRC is not uh, to kick out those deductions. In other words, payroll and those items that are associated with those loans. So that's one of the biggest clarifications in here. Um, uh, there's also some changes and limits as far as healthcare deductions uh, and above the line charitable contributions, as well as uh, the feds changed some items on the low income tax and house, the, the credit and the, uh, uh, and the computation, the percentage. And I think John's gonna go through that with us as we, as we go through the bill. Very good, thank you, Chairman Knight. John? Where's John? This is John. Go ahead, John. We'll go where the chairman left off if you'd like to. Okay, sure. Uh, how's everyone doing first off? Um, so would you would you like me to go through the list? Is that what you'd like me to do? Yes, please. Yeah. Okay. Just want to make sure I'm doing what you guys need. Um, so I, I, I think everyone has the spreadsheet. Is that right? No, sir. We don't actually have. We just we've got a copy of the bill. Okay. So so I'll just speak from the spreadsheet then, and Chairman, maybe I'll. Do uh, you want me to uh, list the item, the significant items, and just just list the cost for the five year period? That, that'd be good. Okay. So uh, I thought uh, uh, Chairman Knight did a, a pretty good job of uh, giving an an an, in, an introduction. Um, um, just as a kind of a, to, to set the stage, um, the CARES Act was passed uh, in March of 2020. I'm sure everyone remembers uh, that time. Uh, and so it, it, it 
it passed and then uh, the legislature addressed it in, uh, in June uh, when you guys uh, came back or when you all came back and uh, uh, so what we did with the, the CARES Act, we adopted everything except for the NOL provisions and something that's called the 461L provision. So everything was adopted. Um, so then, then what happened, the, the, the general, excuse me, the, the Congress and the president, a new bill was signed right at the end of December. And so that's what we are uh, going to talk about today. And that was uh, the, con the Consolidated Appropriations Act of uh, 2021. And so I will just go through uh, the, the items. And these are the items that are uh, over a five-year period or more than $5 million. Um, there's a number of items that are smaller, uh, but which we won't uh, won't really talk about, but they only total uh, eight million over the five years. So those are all uh, pretty small. Uh, so the first item uh, is part of the CARES Act. They um, created kind of a new deduction. It was a $300 charitable uh, contribution deduction uh, for those that don't itemize their deductions. So if you take the standard deduction, it allows that. And Georgia did adopt that uh, back in, in June. And so what that what this uh, the first provision here uh, for the act that passed in December does is um, extend it uh, through 2021, and that cost is about 25 million dollars over the five year period. Um, and I guess uh, Chairman, just stop me if there's questions. Uh, I'm happy to to back up or do my best to explain further. Uh, as much as I can. Um, the second item, <clears throat> normally when you uh, itemize your uh, when you itemize your deductions and you claim uh, your charity deductions, they're limited to a certain amount of your income. Uh, in the past, it was sixty percent. And so what what this provision does is do away with that sixty percent limit um, for uh, 2020 and 2021. So now you could contribute up to 100% of your income essentially. And I, I think that I'm assuming the purpose is uh, because a lot of people uh, uh, you know, are having a tough time now. So just to encourage charitable giving, I think is the purpose. But the total cost of that is not quite as high over the five year period is just over $7 million. There are uh, a number of, uh, there are the next two items, uh, there are uh, two provisions that relate to uh, the low-income housing tax credit. Uh, now, normally, the federal credits don't affect Georgia. We have our own credits, but but our low-income housing credit is equal to the federal credit. So when it changes, it then affects our credit. Um, and uh, I, I'll be uh, frank, the low-income housing tax credit is, is pretty complicated. And I, and I don't consider myself to be an expert in any way, but what this bill did was um, uh, increase the ceiling um, for uh, 2021 and going forward. And then also uh, uh, it changed the rate, um, the way the, the rates are uh, computed. Um, and the total cost of those two provisions over the five-year period is about $45 million. The next item, um, I think, uh, you know, everyone knows the, the, the restaurant industry is having a tough time. Um, and so the next provision relates to the deductibility of business meals. Um, years ago, uh, the federal government, which Georgia adopted, put in place a 50% limit on business meals. Uh, and what this does is do away with that 50% limit. So it allows a 100% deduction for business meals and that's through uh, 2022. And the cost of that is about $51 million. The next item, uh, the medical expense deduction floor, I think uh, most people know, but I'll, I'll give a very brief uh, summary. Um, uh, medical deductions are a little bit different than other itemized deductions, and you can only deduct them to the extent they, they exceed a certain percentage. 
So the percentage for years was seven and a half percent. The Tax Reform Act in 2017 raised that to 12 and a half percent. And then the CARES Act reduced that uh, to seven and a half percent, but but just for a couple of years. So what this bill does is uh, for, um, and let me get the years right, uh, for, um, oh, okay, yeah, no wonder there's no years. What this does is make it again permanent at seven and a half percent. So going forward, it will be seven and a half percent instead of going uh, up and down and up. Um, so they decided just to make that permanent. And the cost of that is $62 million. The next item, um, the exclusion from gross income of discharge of qualified principal residence indebtedness, which in uh, English uh, means that normally um, if your home is foreclosed on um, and the debt is discharged, they, the bank says you don't have to pay it. Um, it's essentially been what's called forgiven. So normally if debt is forgiven, it's considered income. So what this provision does is um, if it's your principal residence, it makes up, up to $2 million um, for a married filing joint and a million uh, if you're filing separately. Um, it makes that, uh, makes that event not taxable. So, and what this does is I'm pretty sure the CARES Act did it for just a year or two. And what this does is um, extends it through 2025. And the cost of that is about $20 million. Hey, John, let, let me let everybody know that uh, Brian just said, if you would refresh your screen, uh, you look at the home page and hit that refresh button. Representative, am I supposed to do something? No, 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 I'm just telling the members that are here in the room. Oh, okay, good, okay, good. That Ways and Means interactive meeting agenda on the, you refresh that whole page. Well, I, I'm glad you're talking to them because I don't know how to refresh my page, so. Um, Brian knows all this. He, okay. All right. If any now remember, members, if y'all have questions, don't hesitate. We'll stop John and, and go to your question. But John, so far you're going good. Continue. Okay, okay great. Yeah, I'm happy to explain as best I can. Um, the next uh, provision um, relates to uh, film productions, TV productions, that kind of stuff. Um, normally um, the way it works um, when you're producing a film is you put all your costs together and then you write them off over the life, over the life of the, the film. Um, so they don't allow you to deduct the entire amount up front. And this provision has been around for a long time and it gets extended uh, every couple of years. But what this does is allow uh, uh, a straight up deduction for the first uh, 15 million of costs. And what this, this extends it through, uh, through 2025. Um, and the cost of that is $23 million. The next item, the exclusion for certain employer payments of student loans. Um, what what this does is it allows an employer to pay off some of your student loans up to $5,250. And normally when your employer does something for you, it's taxable, right? It ends up in your W-2. And so what this does is allow up to $5,250 to be excluded from your W-2. So it's, I think, um, I, think, I think everyone knows there's a, a problem with uh, ballooning student loans. And so I think this is uh, Congress's attempt to, to try to help some. Um, and so what this does is I'm, pr I'm pretty sure uh, this was um, part of the CARES Act as well, um, but, but this again uh, extends it, uh, I believe through 2020. And the cost of that is $15 million over five years. Um, so uh, 
The only items that are left um, relate to uh, the comments that uh, Chairman Knight made about the PPP loan forgiveness. Um, uh, I think, you know, everyone knows what a PPP loan is. Um, what, what these provisions talk about is whether, uh, well, the way a PPP loan works is if you use it for the, uh, the, el the uh, eligible expenses, uh, like for uh, rent, salaries, then uh, the loan is forgiven. And um, as I just mentioned, uh, for the uh, discharge of qualified principal residence, normally when a loan is forgiven, it's taxable. It's a taxable event because you uh, re receive something essentially. Um, but what this does is says that it is not um, it is not taxable, and then it also says that in addition to not being taxable, um, the deductions uh, are also allowed, and um, there. I, I won't go into it uh, real in depth, but um, there is an argument that the, the, the deduction piece was actually part of the CARES Act, which was adopted. And, and we're looking into that um, with the law department. So, so that provision may sort of be already have been adopted. Um, but, uh, you know, of course, the legislature, if they wanted to, to do something, they could, but uh, it would just be done separately. So, so that's that. So, um, if you total all of those items uh, that I talked about, it's about 255 million over five years. And I think it might be helpful to go ahead and uh, give uh, kind of the yearly totals now. Um, does that sound okay? That's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Just to have a little more detail. I didn't do it on each individual item just uh, for time, time saving, but um, for 2021, the cost is about 49 million. And these are uh, state fiscal years. So the fiscal year ending uh, June of 2021. Um, the year ending in June of 2022 is about 82 million. The year ending in 2023 is 49 million. The year ending in 2024 is 36 million. And the year ending in 2025 is about 40 million. And I have rounded, but the, the total cost is 254. 4 million and 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 I I think everyone knows but just just so you sort of understand that everyone understands the process we we the department prepares uh, a spreadsheet that lists each item and then uh, the same folks that do the fiscal notes they put the costs in um, and uh, you know we help them you know to make sure they understand things that kind of stuff but uh, that is all I have as far as the I think what I'm supposed to say, but I can talk about whatever else. Yep. Okay. Thank you, John. Uh, members, anybody have any question, any comment about that? Mr. Chairman, you, yeah, in, in, in the back, Representative Hogan. What, what mic number are you? I follow along closely and, and I appreciate the information, but I'm not able to open up the spreadsheet that's been posted online. I don't know if other members are having the same difficulty and I just ask that we have a chance to um, to see them. Is that what she's bringing? Yeah, uh, we're bringing some hard copies in momentarily uh, so everybody can take a look at the spreadsheet. Yeah, Perfect. we've had some technical difficulties on all the machines getting it uploaded. Okay, anybody else? You got any comments that you'd like to make, Mr. Chairman? Uh, one, while we wait on the spreadsheets, and again, I, I think I, nobody could bring that up. I was looking for it too, because I I'd left a paper copy I had, but um, just to remind everyone how important uh, it is to address the IRC update bill. We've always kept it clean. It's always been a, a bill that needs to go through. Our Georgia taxpayers are already starting to file their tax returns. And, uh, you know, uh, part of that is the state, uh, the state return. So 
you know, as they file these rules uh, or, or laws and rules that go through all the way into the software, the tax software, the, you know, that most CPAs and tax preparers use, are waiting on these updates. Uh, so it's, it's pretty imperative that, uh, you know, we, we continue to move this bill through as we've done in prior years with, with haste, uh, post haste, and get across the Senate so we can hopefully get it signed and uh, uh, the CPAs and tax preparers can get the software updates and, and our citizens can file correct tax returns. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just want to make a comment, if I may. I just want to uh, applaud the author of the bill and the department for codifying that the PPP loans will be of uh, uh, not taxed at a state level as the federal government has, has decided. And there is IRS guidance to that effect. Uh, Representative Carson researched it for me and got it to us. And I believe the department has as well. But I would, um, I get this question a lot uh, about from my constituents, businesses and whatnot. And they're asking consistently, are the PPP loans gonna be forgiven at the state level as well? I don't have a strong accounting background, but I can understand how it would be a, a, for, for businesses bothersome, troublesome to identify forgiven loans and unforgiven loans on their on their both the income statement and the balance sheet, for that matter. Um, and um, our, our CPA representative here can attest to that. So I just want to urge all the members of the committee that we need to move forward. I think it's good for Georgia is consistent with the federal policy. And um, I, I definitely would like to see it, irrespective of what the CARES Act uh, formerly, uh, th th there's a discussion whether it may or may not, this piece of the puzzle is already in place. I just want to make it very clear for our business community. Thank you for the opportunity to comment. Chairman, Chairman um, I was just gonna ask if uh, Mr. Foster could speak. I, I believe this has already been contemplated you know, given the budget that, that we have, you know, and, and currently working on and just to see if he would speak to that or, or the author of the bill one, I think. Uh, Chairman, uh, would you like me to make a comment? Or? Yes, I think you would, John. Sure. Uh, both the, uh, give me just a second, I was gonna grab the spreadsheet again. Uh, <clears throat> so if you, uh, if and when you can look at the spreadsheet, um, what you'll see for the revenue effect, uh, and I'm going to read it and then I'll uh, explain uh, in, in English a little bit better what that means, but uh, for all uh, three of these uh, PPP items, um, and also uh, there's not only the PPP item, but the you'll also hear about the economic inju injury disaster loans. I think I heard it last night referred to as EDL, um, which I don't know if that's right. But at any rate, same concept. Um, it, what 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 the analysis essentially says is there's no revenue effect, and um, policy assumed that it was in the current revenue baseline. So so what that means is a state economist who who has also looked at this assumed that this was going to happen. So um, everyone was expecting it to happen, and it's no surprise. Um, so that that's why it there's no cost listed. Um, it's sort of al already been factored into the uh, budget numbers, so to speak. Does that make sense? It does. We're, we're just now passing out the uh, information, the sheets. <laughs> On the iPads as well. <laughs> Okay, Any, anybody questions? Any? Mr. Chairman, right. if I may make a suggestion, it, yeah. um, everybody wants to take a minute or two to, to review what has been presented uh, based on the, the sheets in front of you. Um, and I'd like to add too, as important as this is, and we've heard that from all the chairmen here, uh, we're We'd like to see this bill, if, if there are no objections from the committee members, we'd like to move this bill out and move it to a full committee tomorrow so we can keep this rolling because tax season is upon us. This is February 
and uh, as we go along, if you have a question, see see the author, and uh, we'll try to answer any of those questions that you have. That's kind of the mode that we're in. I'd like to make a motion that we forego the second hearing. All right, there's a motion and a second to forego the second hearing. You know, most of the time we do have that second hearing. Motion to second, any discussion on that? All in favor of that, say aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And at proper time, I'm not trying to rush you, but proper time, we'll entertain a motion on the bill itself. Move to second. All right, we got a motion second. Any discussion on that? Any discussion? All in favor say aye. aye. All opposed, same sign. Thank you very much. We're gonna take this up tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. Yes, sir. We, we'll have full committee tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. and uh, review this same uh, piece of legislation. And uh, you know, if it's the will of the committee, we'll pass it on out and get this moving so that uh, you know, we can give some certainty out there as to how, you know, our returns are going to be handled. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I believe we're in 606, Brian. Is that 406 tomorrow? Okay. It, is John going to be with us tomorrow? Uh, he, he'd be available for us. John, thank you for your presentation and, and all the numbers and explanations. We really appreciate that. And uh, if anybody has questions, they may reach out to you. Yeah, sure. Thank you. All right. No other question. Meeting adjourned.